Heavier rains, stronger winds and unbearable heat. Extreme weather events of 2024 were exacerbated by the planet's record temperatures. This was Valencia in October. More than 200 killed in the deadliest floods Spain can remember. Across Southeast Asia, more than half a million were displaced by Typhoon Yagi. And this is what happens when almost six months of rain falls during just one week in southern Brazil. 2024 was the hottest year on record. We saw extraordinary land and sea surface temperatures, extraordinary ocean heat, accompanied by, as we all know, very extreme weather affecting many countries. 2024's record heat means the past decade has produced the 10 hottest years on record globally. It also means the planet is off course when it comes to meeting the temperature target of 2015's Paris Climate Agreement. It's not a surprise that 1.5 uh, uh, has been reached. This doesn't mean that the Paris Agreement has been breached. Uh, Paris Agreement make a, a reference uh, typically over a longer period of time of 20 to 30 years, but we are bound to reach 1.5 in the terms of the Paris Agreement and exceed it. As Los Angeles continues to burn, Due to conditions made worse by climate change, the question is whether there is the political will or global agreement to bring the heat down on planet Earth. Well, joining me now is one of the world's top climate scientists, Michael Mann from the Department of Earth and Environmental Science at the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us. You'll have heard um, our Republican politician earlier talking about what he thinks the role of climate change in these fires is. Can I ask you the same question? Yeah, thanks. It's good to be with you. And uh, I was, frankly, um, I found it extremely disturbing. Uh, there were so many untruths that uh, uh, that, that were spoken uh, in that last segment by that congressman. First of all, about the basic science. The science is very clear. It's the large-scale warming and drying from human-caused climate change, from uh, the burning of fossil fuels and carbon emissions that is driving this very clear trend towards larger uh, faster spreading, more damaging, more deadly wildfires. 15 of the worst wildfires in California history have happened within the last 15 years. And so to hear the congressman deny the overwhelming science uh, when it comes to what's driving this is especially disturbing because it also implies that there is really only one true solution here. This will continue to get worse if we don't stop the problem at its source, which is the warming of the planet. And, of course, what's driving that is fossil fuel burning and policies like those supported by the congressman and the incoming Trump administration to dismantle all climate action in the United States and double down in our extraction and burning of fossil fuels. It was extremely disturbing to hear so much inf uh, misinformation packed into a few minutes. I mean, a, a lot of people have assumed for a long time that, that you know, man man's ability to mitigate the effects of climate change uh, would be ahead of the effects of climate change. Is, is this fire in L.A., you know, one of the first pieces of hard evidence that we're way behind? Yeah, we, we talk about these global numbers, like uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius. And, and you know, it, it's very hard to sort of, um, you know, picture what that means. Uh, you know, what that means, that, that number is really used as a catch-all for all of the impacts that are associated with that level of warming of the planet. And so when we talk about 1.5 Celsius, we're talking about the large-scale changes in drought patterns, in ocean currents, in the warming, the melting of ice that are driving these unprecedented extreme weather events, including these devastating wildfires. And they will continue to get worse as the planet con continues to get warmer, and the planet will continue to get warmer as long as we continue to burn fossil fuels. What does this latest set of data tell us about where we are in terms of a trajectory for global warming and that sort of 1.5 to 2 degree range of warming? Yeah, in, in, in the segment you guys uh, just did before this, um, uh, there, was, there was a comment which w w was correct and really important. Um, you know, we, we talk about how global temperatures exceeded 1.5 degrees uh, this year, this past year, and that makes it sound like we have exceeded the warming of the Paris Agreement, the 1.5 Celsius 
warming threshold. Um, and that's not actually what it means because temperatures fl uh, fluctuate up and down from year to year due to things, natural events like the El Nino phenomenon. And that's part of what contributed this last year to the exceptional heat. The trend line, that has not yet passed 1.5 Celsius. The trend line will pass that threshold in about a decade if we fail to bring down our carbon emissions dramatically. And so that's what we should be keeping our eye on. And, and are you able to say sort of, you know, how far behind we are, if you like, in terms of stopping that from happening? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we know we've got to bring carbon emissions down by about 50 percent within the next six years or so. And we need to bring them down to zero uh, by mid-century to uh, avert that the warming, that trend line passing one and a half degrees Celsius. And right now, we're not going down that, that slope. We're not going down the mountain as we need to. We're sort of riding along at the plateau. The good news is we're not rising anymore. Our carbon emissions aren't increasing. The bad news is they're not coming down fast enough. Michael Mann, thank you very much indeed for joining us.